All right, here we are, part three of the unit review. Okay, we're still going through these. So, um, what what about when you are at um, twice the time constant? What will be the charge on there? Okay, so at twice the time constant, then that's going to be um, it will be the final charge, twelve coulombs, times one minus one over e squared. That's what the math is. And so uh, it, it will, you know, you can do the math for that one. What will be the I through the resistor it has it changes with time? Okay, the I through the resistor as it changes with time is going to be I naught, which is 2 amps, E to the negative T over RC. Okay, what will be the power of the resistor as time goes on? What, how much power, what will be the equation that will describe the power as time goes on? Okay, you want to think of that? Pause me and think of that. Okay, it's I squared R. But I squared is this. So if I square this over here, the power, how it changes with time, is going to be um, square that so that it would be 4 amps squared. And when you square this term, that just turns into E to the negative 2T over RC. So that's I squared times R, and R is uh, 2 ohms. So that's the equation for the power. It's I squared times R. So you just got to take this whole term, square it. And when you square an E function, you just, you know, that's just going to turn into E to the negative T over RC squared is just put a 2 up there. Okay. Moving right along. What is the... Um, what is the pot what is the area underneath the power versus time graph give you? What does this area give you? Okay, it gives you um, energy or um, work done. And so that gives you energy. That's because this is joules per second, and that's seconds. So when you do the area, you're gonna just get joules. Okay, could you graph the power of the resistor with time? Graph that power of the resistor with time. So this guy, can you graph that? See what you get. Okay, so that's just another uh, decay function. So it's just going to decay like this. But here's the thing, the area underneath this curve, this is the energy. It's the thermal energy created. And, you know, you might think that it creates an infinite amount of energy if given an infinite time, but that actually converges to some finite number. Uh, if you wanted to get this energy, all you'd have to do is do this. Power is DE dt. That's what power is, DE dt. Bring the dt over here. And if you integrate both sides, this will give you the total energy. But for power, you'd have to put in this here equation. So you put in that equation and you, you take the um, integral of it from 0 to infinity. And that would get you the total power. Okay. Um, okay, lastly, here we have... Um, a capacitor that we're going to discharge. It's got an initial charge of um, 20 coulombs. And um, we close the switch. And at T equals 0, what will be the voltage across the capacitor at T equals 0? Well, at T equals 0, the voltage is um, Q over C. So it's going to be 10 volts. 2 farads, 20 coulombs. What will be the voltage across the resistor at 0 seconds? They have to match. These have to be the exact same. And so this would be 10 volts as well. Current's going to flow this way. So um, here's the electric field. If we start here, we go up. We go up 10 volts. Since we're going with the current, we go down 10 volts. What would be the resistance at zero seconds then? I'm thinking it's 1 amp because it's 10 volts divided by 10 ohms. It's 1 amp. 
What's the power of the resistor at zero seconds? It's um, one, it's I squared R, so it's one squared, so one amp squared times R, so it's 10 watts. What's the voltage across the capacitor at infinity? Well, it will be discharged. So there is no voltage. What will be the voltage across the resistor at infinity? There will be no more current there. So that will be zero volts. What will be the power at infinity? Well, that'd be I squared R, but I is zero. So this is zero watts. Okay. For this graph, what is the uh, what is the charge on the capacitor after one time constant? That's a tau or a tau for um, time constant. So, um, what is the what is the charge after one time constant? Well, it starts out twenty coulombs, and um, after one time constant, it's decaying. So it will get to twenty coulombs over E. How about after two time constants? That will be 20 coulombs over E squared. Okay, what about the voltage across the resistor after, after one time constant? Well, the original voltage is 10 volts, so it will be 10 volts times E. It'll be about, about 3 volts. After one time constant, it'll be about 3 volts. After two time constants, it will be um, 10 divided by... Um, nine, so it'll be like one volt. After three time constants, it'll be like 10 divided by 27. So it'll be like a third of a volt. And after four time constants, you know how that goes. It's at 81 or something. Yeah, so um, how about the power in the resistor after one time constant? Okay, well, the power across the resistor, it starts out as one amp, yeah, but after one time constant, it will be one amp over E. That will be the, the amount of current it has, and we'll square that times 10 ohms. So that's the power across the resistor after one time constant. All right. Hey, in this case, if they asked you how much thermal energy is created in this resistor, from zero to infinity. So how much thermal energy will be created in the resistor from zero seconds to infinity? Well, you can get that done two ways. Can you think of either of the two ways? Well, the energy in the capacitor had to be turned into, so E equals E prime. All the energy in the capacitor got turned into thermal energy in the resistor. And so you can say that um, 1 half, 1 over C, Q squared, that all got turned into thermal energy. Or uh, you can do this. You can say the, the thermal energy is just the area underneath the power versus time graph. So it's the area underneath the power versus time graph. And, the, and so it'd be power versus time. And you go from 0 to infinity. And for that power right there, you're going to put in 1 amp squared or E, well, how about we do this? 1 amp times E to the negative T over RC. We'll square that, and it'll be times R. See, I squared R, that's what goes in there. And you churn through that, and you'll get 1 half 1 over C Q squared if you do that. All right. Well, that's all I have to tell you today. Hope you do all right on this test. Bye.